Good evening, welcome to Wednesday Word, where we take a simple word, we think about it biblically, and we think about it practically. Uh, today, the word that I want to think about is the word service. You say, well, where in the world did you get the word service? That could take forever to talk about the word service. There's a lot in the Bible that it says about the word service, and a lot to be said about the word service. But I guess I'm mindful of the word service because today is Veterans Day, and we honor, as we should, uh, those men and women who have what? Who have served our country. Uh, they've given their lives, really, uh, committed to serving our country. We, we often say, interestingly enough, when somebody's going to the Army or the Navy or the Air Force, Marines, whatever it be, that they're going into the service. <laughs> Why? Because they're going with the uh, very profound realization that they are going to serve. I've had people close to me that have entered into that process, and it is indeed true. You are trained uh, to first serve. So it served as a bit of a challenge to me. Um, I have not in my life been called to uh, the armed forces to go and serve my country in that way, but uh, I have been called to serve my Lord. I've been called into service of my King, the Lord uh, Jesus Christ. And a bit challenged uh, when I think about the ways in which our veterans have served our country <laughs> compared to the way that I uh, may be lacking in serving my Lord. So I thought maybe we would talk a little bit about uh, service. Uh, the question is this, is has my life, has your life been characterized by service to your King, to your Lord, to Jesus? Should it be? Well, absolutely, it should be. And there's lots of scriptures that lead us to that place. But uh, one in particular today, because we only have a few minutes, and that's in Matthew chapter 20. Matthew chapter 20. Uh, starting in, the, in verse 20 of Matthew chapter 20, uh, there's an interesting conversation taking place between the mother of James and John, the sons of Zebedee, uh, and Jesus. And uh, you may remember that story. She says, listen, Jesus, I want my one son to be your right hand and my other son to be your left hand. What was she saying? I, I want my sons to be in a place of authority. I want them to be in a high position, position of power. I want them to be secure in that place. And it creates a really interesting conversation with Jesus. And at the end of that conversation, he calls his disciples over and he says some very important things about service. He says this, uh, you all know that the rulers of the Gentiles, they lord it over them, and their great ones exercise authority over them. He said, listen, in your culture, uh, the, the Roman uh, government, uh, they, they create authority, they create power by their positions of power and authority. And then he says this in verse 26 to the disciples, to us, it shall not be so among you contrast. We're, we're not going to do it like the Gentiles. Uh, we're not going to do it like uh, the, the culture has done it. Instead, he says this, whoever would be great among you, position of power, the position of authority, whoever's going to be great among you must also be a servant. Ah. Uh, to be great, you must be in service. And then, in case we didn't get it, he says it again in a different way. Whoever would be first among you, whoever has the place of priority, the place of power, must be your slave. Hmm. So, the place of prominence, says Jesus, the place of authority, says Jesus, is the place of service. And then he says this, that even before his crucifixion and his resurrection, even as the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. He's giving us a, 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 a head start in thinking about the crucifixion and the resurrection. But he's saying this, that, that, that not only is this my command that you find your place of authority by service, right? As a leader, you must serve. But... You're to follow the example of the Son of Man, whom we know today as we sit here as Jesus, who came not to be served. He, he, he had all the rights to. He's the Son of Man. He's the Son of God. He, he could have come and said, everybody needs to do what I do. That's not what Jesus did. 
He didn't come to be served, but he came to serve. In fact, served by even giving up his life as a ransom for many, that, that you and I might be rescued. Uh, so well, what's it tell us about service? Uh, it tells us this, that service is at the very heart of being near the heart of Jesus. <laughs> service is what he has called us to, and that's what his example has shown us. Service is at the heart of being near the heart of Jesus. Service is at the very core of following Jesus, of being like Jesus. Yeah, this thing of service is important. In fact, um, being called to Jesus literally means we're being called to service. Service to God. How are we to serve God? Yeah, by serving one another. So, question uh, this evening is, how's your serve? <laughs> uh, uh, allow that to, to challenge us, right? We've been called to be sons, daughters of God. And in so doing, to be at the heart of Jesus, near the heart of Jesus, uh, to follow Jesus, to be like Jesus, means that that is our call. Our call is to serve. So, whoever's in front of you today, uh, tomorrow, as you go about life, may we recognize, as we are grateful for those who have served our country, may we recognize that it is now our call as followers of Christ to serve one another as we serve our King. Have a great day.